Okay, so we have a, a problem here to work through that's going to ask us to compute the margin of safety. It says Sally has an online poster business. Suppose Sally expects to sell 1,500 posters. Her average sales price per poster is $45 and her average cost per poster is $25. Her fixed expenses total $15,000. Compute her margin of safety in units and sales dollars and as a percentage of expected sales. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, run some calculations here. Now hopefully you realize that in order to calculate margin of safety that we need to, uh, sorry, that we need to first calculate the break-even point because the margin of safety calculation is to take, say for example, expected sales minus break-even sales. So first of all, we're going to need to calculate the contribution margin per unit. So contribution margin per unit, we've been through this a few times, is going to be sales minus variable expenses, or the sales price minus the variable cost. So in this particular example, we've got a sales price per poster of 45 minus, sorry, minus the $25 variable cost. So if that's the case, it's $20 contribution margin per poster. So if her fixed costs, they tell us, are $15,000, all we need to do is divide that by the $20 contribution margin per poster, and that tells us she needs to sell a minimum of 750 posters to break even. So that's her break even in sales, 750 posters. Now the break-even calculation in dollars is a little bit more complicated. Again, it is the fixed cost plus any targeted net income divided by the contribution margin ratio. Well, the contribution margin ratio you see over here is our contribution margin per unit divided by the sales price per unit. So let's go back and calculate that. So we know our fixed costs are 15,000. That's given in the problem. Let's calculate that contribution margin ratio. So contribution margin per unit is $20, we just calculated that, and the sales price per unit is 45. So if we take 15,000 divided by 44.4% or 0.44444, we should get a break even in dollars rounded to $33,750. Okay, so keep these numbers in mind. 750 posters or 33,750 is what we need for our break-even sales in units. Now we can go ahead and calculate the margin of safety in units. So expected sales, she expects to sell, uh, it looks like 1,500 posters. And the break-even units were 750, that's what we calculated. So that means that the margin of safety is 750 posters. So that's a pretty significant amount or a good size margin of safety there. She can not sell 750 of the 1500 and still break even. Now we can do this calculation in dollars as well. First we have to calculate the expected sales though. We don't know that. We know it's $45 per poster and she expects to sell 1500 posters. So if she has a $1500 per poster I'm sorry, 1,500 units times $45 per poster. This should mean that expected sales would be 67,500. And then subtract the break-even sales. Let's go back. Break-even sales, we calculated at 33,750. So 33. Sorry, my computer is being a little temperamental here. 33,750 gives us margin of safety in dollars of the same, 33,750. So this would be break even in dollars, 33,750. Okay, so now we can compute the margin of safety as a percentage of expected sales. And the way that we do that, let's take the margin of safety in dollars, which we just calculated as 33,750, minus our expected sales in dollars, or I should say divided by, shoot, sorry about that. Let's make this a divided by.
Okay. So we can go ahead. Okay. Go ahead and make this a divided by our expected sales of 67,500. So 33,750 divided by 67,500 is 50%. So there's a 50% cushion or margin of safety in expected sales. They could lose 50% of their sales and still break even, which is pretty nice. Okay, so let's look at one more extension of this problem, and that would be to calculate the operating leverage uh, factor and determine what happens if sales volume increases by 20%. Okay, so the way that we're going to start this problem is that we need to calculate the total contribution margin earned on 1,500 posters. So if let's take the contribution margin. We know is, one more time, sorry, is uh, $45. Minus the $25 cost, that's going to be $20 contribution margin per item. And if they sell 1,500 posters, that means they will have a total contribution margin of $30,000. Now their fixed expenses, we are told, is $15,000. So that means our operating income will be also $15,000. Just so happens that they're equal amounts here. So now, in order to determine our operating leverage, we take the contribution margin divided by our operating income. So if we take $30,000 contribution margin, and we divide that by the 15,000, That gives us an operating leverage factor of 2. So then we can say, well, if volume is going to increase by 20%, then if we multiply that 20% times the operating leverage factor of 2, that means that um, operating income will increase by 40%. So if they have a 20% increase in volume, this operating income will increase by 40%. And we can actually go through and double check our work here. And let's go ahead and do that. Let me get rid of this. Okay, so let's do a little proof here and prove that we are correct. So if our original volume was going to be 1,500 posters, and we're going to do an additional 20%. What we would need to do would be to take 1,500 times the 20%. And that should be 300 more additional units. So that would be 1,800 will be our new volume of sales. Now if we multiply that times our contribution margin per unit, which we have already determined to be $20, that means our new total contribution margin will be 1800 times the $20, so that's 36000 minus our fixed expenses, and fixed is 15000 so that means our new operating income will be $21,000. Now, if we look back, our operating income previously was $15,000. So if we look at the difference between our old That's 15,000. That means a $6,000 increase in operating income. And if we take the $6,000 increase divided by our old operating income of $15,000, that's a 40% change, which is exactly what we had anticipated previously, right? 40%. There we go. Thank you.